Okay, before we start our press conference with Indiana student athletes and go over a couple reminders, satellite coordinates, SES3, pardon me, SES3KO4A. There's handouts on the uh, display area behind the cam elevated cameras there. Again, uh, if you have a question, raise your hand, identify yourself, and we'll have a microphone holder come over to you. I uh, want to remind everybody that uh, please put your cell phones on vibrator or turn them off, and flash photography and video is not permitted. So at this time, uh, without further ado, I'd like to uh, welcome uh, from the Indiana Hoosiers, Yogi Farrell, Troy Williams, and Nick Zeisloff, and we'll take questions for our student athletes. Raise your hand, and we'll get to you right here on the aisle. Hi, Yogi Bob Kravitz from WTHR in Indianapolis. Have you taken time to think about the long road you've traveled and what this last run really means to you personally? Yeah, yeah, I have. I feel like I've came a long way since my freshman year, and I've had a wonderful time at IU playing under Coach Crean. He's taught me a lot of different things, met a lot of great people. But I feel like this last year has been something very special to me just because of you know, our team and our success. It's definitely been one of my most fun years at IU. So I say this last push that we have coming up here, um, playing in this NCAA tournament, uh, you know, just, you know, grateful to be here. In the back, in the white shirt. Yogi, just curious, I'm sorry, Jordan Furby from WOI here in Des Moines. Just curious to get your thoughts on the city. Have you guys had a chance to, to get out and, and look at the city and, and your impressions? Obviously, this is the first time the city has hosted something of this magnitude and also uh, just the thought on having Kansas, Kentucky, UConn, your guys selves here. That's 20 national titles all in one one spot. Uh, um, we haven't got out much really. Uh, it's a business trip so we've got no time to, for any fun or games right now. But yeah, we're in a very, very great bracket um, with a lot of great teams, a lot of history in it. So, you know, that's just what makes the tournament so special is that um, you play in high-level teams every single night. Aisle over here. Yogi, for, or for any other players, this is Mike Pecker from Peaks.com. You've not faced a lot of full-court pressure. It's not a thing you see from a lot of Big Ten teams. What are the keys for you against Chattanooga's press tomorrow? Yeah, the key to that press is you can't be timid. Uh, they're a very great defensive team when they press. They're definitely one of the longer teams that we've played all year. Haven't played a Big Ten team as long as them, just across the board. So with that press, you got to make great passes, come to your pass, pass fakes. But uh, one thing, you just can't be timid. You got to be make sure you're sure of your passes, because uh, you know their press is is pretty good. Nick, you want to ask, answer that question too? Um, I think Yogi hit it pretty much on the dot. Um, you know they're a long team. Uh, you got to you know attack them in, in terms of that because their length can be very uh, very pesky out there. Um, you know, just don't be timid and, and attack it, you know, with uh, with the ball and the pass. Anything you have to add to it, Troy? No, they, they both answered it. Oh, other quite Todd, up here in the front. This question's for Nick. Uh, Nick, uh, I saw you play early in your career at Illinois State. Can you elaborate on how you've grown as a player and your journey to get here as well uh, as a player playing uh, at this stage? I mean, it's been a long journey, um, long process, and just sticking with uh, the process every day has got me to this point, and it's got all of, you know my teammates to this point as well. Um, you know, we've been training for this for all our lives, and uh, you know, as long as we've put every day in the best we can, you know, we're prepared for for the next day. So, um, you know, just as long as we stick with each other and and the coaches, that's really what I've been doing my whole career, and that's what we've been doing as a team here at IU too. So, um, you know, that's that's been the key to success. Other questions? Go refer back to Todd. Go ahead. Okay, we we go right here, and then we come to Todd next. This is for all of you guys. After the rough start at Maui and then Blackman's injury to then winning the conference in the regular season. Can you all speak to a moment in which you saw this team come together, you saw the team rally together and recognize what needed to happen for success? We'll start with Troy first, and uh, Nick, and then Yogi. 
Um, I mean, as a team, we've always been together. I think those moments that happened in Maui and that st uh, things after that's what actually brought us closer. I mean, since the, since the summer when we first came together, we always rallied against each other. Uh, I mean, not against each other, but with each other. And that, um, I mean, those moments just made us closer. It made us more together and put us more into the same mentality. It, it opened our eyes, really. So, I mean, with the success that we have, so we have been having so far since those moments, it just, just uh, brought us even closer. Nick? Um, yeah, like Troy said, you know, it wasn't really one specific moment. Um, it was just a bunch of moments together as a team that really got us, you know, as, as close as we are now. Um, you know, there's tough times that brought us all closer together, and that's what happened. Yogi? Uh, in my opinion, when I saw we came together, it's kind of like what Troy said. In Maui, you know, after we lost UNLV, we watched the film just as a team. And since then, I feel like, you know, we're basically a, a player-driven program. We hold guys accountable. Um, we're out on that court. We're critiquing each other, complimenting each other. I think that's when we're at our best is when we're listening to our teammates, hearing what they have to say. Because that not only helps our teammates, but it helps us analyze the game as well. We go to Todd now. Yogi, this is, excuse me, Yogi, this is for you. Um, you've been in the tournament two other times. Uh, what have you imparted to your teammates? And what have you learned from those two other tournament experiences that either you apply successfully from before or you avoid from uh, other tournaments that weren't as successful? Yeah, well, you know, playing out there, you know, I've just told these guys just to play free. You know, you can't play with any jitterbugs. You just got to go out there and play the game like it's any other game. You know, like our, our coach would say, the game is imperfect, so people are going to turn the ball over and you got to get on to the next play. And in order to have success, you know, everything's got to be clicking, offense, defense, rebounding, got to knock down free throws. And, you know, when everything's clicking on all cylinders, you can go deep into the tournament. Any other questions out there? Anything else? Okay, gentlemen, we're going to dismiss you, and good luck tomorrow. We have Coach Crean up here shortly.
Thanks, Lynn. Just a reminder, uh, if you can turn your cell phones off, put them on vibrator mode, no uh, flash photography, no video. Without further ado, we'd like to uh, welcome uh, Indiana coach uh, Tom Crean with opening statement, and welcome to Des Moines. Well, thank you. We're, we're really honored to be here and uh, anxious to get out into the arena. I've never been there, but uh, it's an uh, awesome state, and we know that from playing Iowa all these years and um, looking forward to the environment that we'll, that we'll have here. But we're excited to be here. We've had a good, solid week of getting better, and we also made sure we got some time off uh, from, from playing live, but it's been a very good week for, for making ourselves better and really locking in to Chattanooga. And uh, we're aware of them, certainly, uh, from having some like opponents that we'd seen them on film, but then when you really dive into them and in preparation for knowing that you're going to play them, you get a whole other level of respect with them. They have a true depth. and and. Your depth is only as good as your consistency, and, and they've got very consistent players. So, you know, one through five is obvious, but when they go to the bench, there's not a ton of drop-off at all. They're, they're very long. This is probably, you know, I haven't seen them in person yet, but this has got to be one of the, the, the longer teams we will have faced, and you can really see it when they get up into their zone. You know, they press full court, but they also have an outstanding zone that they can go into. And uh, you're, I, we haven't seen a team that is that big at the front of the zone the way that they are. Uh, they get very good balance with their scoring. 
And um, we're, the concern points are that, that they don't put anybody on the court that's not capable of scoring or shooting the ball. And the fact that they've dominated from the foul line throughout conference play in the sense of making more free throws than their opponents attempted, that's always a, a scary thing, which means they're committed to getting the ball inside, they're committing to get the ball off the glass, and they're committed to running the break. So we have uh, learned to have a lot of respect for them in a short period of time. I was always well aware of Matt McCall and his reputation when he was with Billy and at Billy Donovan at Florida, and he certainly made his own reputation as an outstanding coach at Chattanooga. You can see that, and um, uh, we're looking forward to the game. So we've had, uh, we've had a chance to, to, to really dive in, and now we're anxious to see how we do tomorrow. Questions up here in the front, and then we'll go to the aisle there. Brendan Stiles from the Sports Exchange. Coach, you mentioned on Sunday after you learned that you were a five seed that you brought down the Big Ten trophy to your team room and showed it to your players to remind them of that. How would you say they've responded over the last couple of days to your message? Well, first and foremost, we had the trophy there before the pairings came out. It wasn't like I brought it afterwards. But, but uh, yeah, that, that, that was over and done with that night. You know, once we got into – not the trophy. You know, it's still there. But once we got into uh, preparing for Chattanooga – and what I like about this team – is by the time we got together with them on Monday, they were already very well versed on Chattanooga. Not just Yogi and Nick and Max, but numerous guys had already gotten into the film, uh, be it Sunday night, be it Monday morning, and uh, they were already, you know, answering questions and and posing questions uh, in the film room because we didn't do a live practice on Monday or or, or Sunday, but we did uh, a ton of walkthrough, and so they already had a lot of it down, and I was really excited about that. That means they're, the way they've been all year is they've been focused on the, the, the game. They've been focused on what is next in the game. They have never spent much time looking behind. Um, this is a team that has never jumped out ahead and, and, and started looking down the road, and this was a great example of it again the other day. They've totally stayed immersed in who their next opponent was, and they've stayed immersed in getting better. Pat? Hey, Tom, you, you actually just just mo answered most of my next question there, but given the amount of people that want to talk about what the next game could be, you've praised this team for its ability to lock in. How important, I guess, will that be for the next 48 hours here? Well, it, the fact of the matter is if we don't play an outstanding game, there is no next game for us. And I think it's not just because it's one and done. It's not just because it's March Madness. It's because Chattanooga is really good. And... Um, Again, I, I don't have concerns with that. Even when we got beat at Penn State, it wasn't because we were overlooking Penn State to get ready for Iowa. We just didn't play as well. So we know we're going to have to play really well. We're going to have to make shots. We're going to have to rebound. We're going to have to keep them off the foul line. Uh, there's no question we're going to see uh, the potential of more pressure than maybe we have seen from many teams in the Big Ten. And I likened it to Iowa um, on Sunday night before we really dove in, but, but they're so big at the, top of the, at the top of the zone that you've really got to work at that. So there's been no time to really think much about I mean, they're all aware of who's in the bracket. Our coaches will work ahead. I haven't, and we certainly haven't done any preparation for another game inside of the preparation we've done for this. Right by and Pat there on the aisle. With uh, WOI here in Des Moines, just uh, curious to get your thoughts on Des Moines. Obviously, this is the first time the city has hosted something on this scale. They've hosted the wrestling and uh, women's volleyball before, but uh, to for a first-time host to get four blue bloods of college basketball, just curious what you think about that and what you may know about the city. Well, I, I'm well aware of Iowa. I've not spent much time here. I have friendships in this area, but but I love the state. I mean, I've recruited in the state. Certainly, have competed in the state. And, and this is no different. I mean, when you pull up to the arena today, we practiced at Drake, uh, which was a really nice spot to be. One of my former coaches is Todd, or one of my former players is a coach over there, Todd Townsend. And so when we're pulling up and you see all the people on a Wednesday afternoon that are coming in and out of the building for a practice, I mean, that, that's cool. I mean, that really is. And so, again, I'll be able to answer that question even better after getting out into the arena. But... Uh, Outside of losing some games in the state of Iowa, I've really not had too many bad trips into the state of Iowa. Front aisle here. Coach, Mike Pegram from Peaks.com. Can you update us on uh, Robert Johnson's ankle? Is he, is he cleared to go? And, uh, and Juwan Morgan and uh, Colin Hartman also. Well, we've, we've had – everybody's been available this week. Robert is, is doing more day by day. He practiced, so I would say right now he, was, he is definitely probable as long as – 
things continue to move in the direction that they're moving right now. His first time doing anything of full court nature was yesterday. We didn't even do anything with him. We worked him out Monday, but it was more in a half court situation. But, but he's been making progress, and he made progress last week. I don't think we would have been, even if we'd have gone all the way last weekend, I don't think he would have been able to do that. But, but um, he's made a lot of progress, and so I think he's very probable. Juwan has practiced all week, and, and Colin certainly has some, um, some lingering effects from falling the other day, but, but he's been available to us as well. Monroe. Coach, Justin Albers with scout.com. You mentioned uh, a lot of times Sunday and Monday about their free throw shooting and, and their ability to get to the line. As you watched the film, were there areas in particular that helped them get to the line? Was it just their size or, or this, are there situations that concern you more than others in terms of your team fouling them? No, they get really good balance. I mean, they've got numerous guys. I mean, they're a big team and, and they're not just big on a couple of guys. I mean, they're threes and fours and they're twos. They're big guys and, and they're strong. I mean, you can see the veteran. I mean, I read in the Ken Palm rankings that they were like the 17th most experienced team in the country. You can see that when you watch him play. He's done a great job taking somebody else's guys that were successful and making them even better to make them ultra successful. And I think that's a great sign of the way the program was left for him and what he's done with it. So to me, they post up, they offensive rebound, they drive the ball. They do a great job of dropping the ball off to the baseline if they're not in a post up. So you've got to really be active. We, we've got to have great hands in this game. I mean, we've got to be not hands on bodies, but we've got to have great activity with our hands and feet because, because they move the ball well. And so what they do is they catch people in rotation a lot and then they get the drive and they may get bumped on the perimeter or they drop it off and they get it inside. But to me, uh, so much of it's going to start with the transition defense and not letting them get easy baskets on drives or follow-ups, and then it's going to go to the, the ability to defensive rebound and, and, um, because they, they, they do get fouled numerous times on putbacks. And we just got to be really, really vigilant in how we're, we're, we're pressuring the ball you know, or what we're, what, what we're doing in the post. We can't put our hands in and slap down. We can't be in a – situation we're putting hands in the body because it, it's obvious it's going to get called tighter now as, as we get into this this time of year and we've got to be able to adjust to that accordingly got a question on the left side left aisle there coach uh, dave campbell associated press you, you mentioned how well versed the players were on the film just a day later um yogi farrell mentioned this really being like a player driven program sure has that been a process with this team? Um, is something you noticed right away that had that potential? Oh, no, it's always a process. I do think you see the potential because you want to see it in every team. The best teams are player-driven. I mean, they really are. They, they, the coach creates the atmosphere and, 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 and lays out the plan, but it's the players that carry it out. And it sounds corny, but it's absolutely true and it, because there's so much more conversation that goes on between players that can have a meaningful impact on the team, on and off the court. And, and um, that's the bottom line. Yogi has done a tremendous job of that. Nick Zeisloff and Max Bielfeldt have done a great job of that. Colin and Troy are like seniors in that area. Colin's been like that for some time, and Troy has really grown into that. And Troy's really grown into it this year. And, um, and so then all of a sudden, some of the younger players, you know, who are smart and work hard and, and spend a lot of time at it, they're all ears when they're learning from their teammates. And so there's a great, you know, we have a really good connection. When we're, when we're connected on the defensive end, we're really good when we're moving the ball quickly and moving without the ball quickly and and frequently on the offensive end we're good there and i think you know a coach can talk all that they want that comes because the players are absolutely connected but again you got to create the atmosphere as a coach and as a staff but it's the players that carry that out and and the greatest compliment in my mind a coach can get is for people to see a player driven program and when they see that now you know that, that the leadership has really taken the reins in, in, in making it happen for each other. We have less than uh, five minutes in this press conference session. Any other questions here? Front row, uh, aisle. Uh, Mike from Peaks.com. Tom, seems like they're a little bit more dangerous as a pressing team because they have the 610 uh, shot blocker in the back. Can you just kind of speak to how that really helps a pressing team? Team. Well, we've, we've played against other really good shot blocking teams before. And so what you do is you, you say, okay, they run this offense like Nebraska, or they, 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 they make it hard for you to get the ball here like Iowa does, or they block shots like Purdue does, right? So you, you try to give them a, a base of reference, different players, different style, the whole deal, but you try to give them something different. 
A year ago, all right, we made a lot of mistakes trying to attack Purdue, all right? They blocked 15 of our shots. This year, I think they blocked one or two, right? You, you cannot go and try to challenge shot blockers. You've got to drive around them. You've got to make the next pass. You know, you'd like to be able to pull them out of the lane, you know, and their zone allows that to happen because they get so big at the top of the one through one zone. And so to me, if we go in there and we try to challenge these guys, that, that's not good. If we go in there and try to score over their length by being slow with the ball in the post and try to make two, three, four dribbles and two moves, that, that's ridiculous. You know, we were too slow in the post on, on Friday. We were far too slow in the post. We didn't go quickly. And, and um, we, we fully anticipate getting doubled. You know, Thomas especially getting doubled by, um, by uh, Chattanooga. So the bottom line is, can we get it in? Can we get it up or can we get it in and out quickly? and make the game keep moving. The last thing we want to do is turn this game into a slow down isolation game where their rotations can come over and create not only the block shot on the ball, but the one off the ball. So again, the more the ball is moving, the more that no matter, no matter what defense it is, we've got to keep moving the ball and, and, and moving without the ball. And, and if it gets slow and we start trying to play in a static area, we start trying to play in a, this spot or that spot, that's when we're not so good. That's not where we've been successful. That's what a shot blocking team wants. So we've got to make sure we don't allow that to happen. I have time for two more questions. Anybody else? Back aisle there. Nick Cosmider with the Denver Post. Coach, I know that uh, you're focused on tomorrow, but I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about our state's top prospect and how happy you were to see him win his second title to Ron Davis and how excited you are to finally get him in. I was Houston. really excited. I was, I was definitely uptight at the 714 mark of the second quarter when he got that third foul. But uh, we all had it on. You know, that's the, the power of direct TV, right? And um, it was great. I got to be out there a little over a month ago to see him play in person. And um, I'm proud of him. I mean, he's, 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 that's what you want to recruit. You want to recruit pure winners. And he is. I mean, he is a pure winner. He's been in the spotlight in, in Colorado for a long, long time. We offered him a scholarship when he was going into the ninth grade. I love his upside. I love his, his – he's obviously got talent. He's got a great spirit. He's got tremendous loyalty. I mean, tremendous loyalty. And that, that's the kind of thing that I'm looking for. Thomas Bryant is like that. I mean, when you, when you feel that connection with somebody before they ever get to your campus, it, it makes it that much better when they get there. But he's, he's going to – his game will expand. Danny did a great job with him. That entire group did a great – the Hawks did a great job with him. And um, it'll be fun to have him because he's, he's going to get nothing but better. And it's a lot like Thomas Bryant. He's a very undervalued shooter. You know, he can play in the post. He can rebound. He can block shots. He can run the floor. He can defend. But he's a very, very undervalued shooter. And I think that's where he's going to make some real strides. Last question. Anybody? Well, thanks a lot, Coach. Thank Best you. Thank you.